we bring you the new comedy show, Our Miss Brooks, starring Shirley Booth. You know, it's a funny thing. I'm always careful about standing in a dress. But no matter how careful I am, I always get a pain in the neck teaching English, too. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks. Have you met her yet? Maybe you think a school teacher's life is dull. Well, it is. But there are moments when even Miss Brooks' life can be as romantic and glamorous as a movie star's. It's when she's dreaming. And especially when she's dreaming about Mr. Boynton, the biology teacher. It's a few minutes after seven in the morning, and the Davis family with whom Miss Brooks lives is still asleep. And so is Miss Brooks. Oh, Mr. Boynton. I love you, Miss Brooks. Kiss me, Mr. Boynton. Oh, Mr. Boynton. Uh, Miss Brooks. Oh, Miss Brooks. Kiss you me be again, Mr. Boynton. Nice, Mr. Boynton. Mr. Brooks, you think, Miss Brooks, you have to go to school. Oh, no, Mr. Boynton. I don't have to go to school for this. This comes naturally. Oh, dear, you don't understand. You slept through your alarm. I was? Oh, no. What time is it, Mrs. Davis? It's all right, dear. It's only a quarter after seven. Oh, a quarter after seven. A quarter after seven? I'm late. I mean, I will be if I don't rush. Will you hand me my slip? Yes, dear, here you are. Oh, I've got to hurry. Today's a very important day at school. The faculty's going to meet the new president of the school board, Osgood Conklin. And this is no day to be late. Well, it certainly isn't. Uh, did you say Osgood Conklin? Yes. Why? Did you ever hear of him? Oh, hear of him? Why, I've known Osgood for years. We were school children together. Just imagine little stony Face Conklin growing up to be a school board president. stony Face Conklin? He always hated to laugh. Oh. I remember the high school dances. He kept requesting only one song, Gloomy Sunday. Oh, fine. He sounds like fun. I wonder how he feels about teachers breathing. I think he's for it. Well, if he isn't, I could cut it out in a minute. Right along with eating. Say, I'd better wash up and get my face on fast. New school board presidents don't like to wait for teachers. Is that you, Miss Brooks? Oh, I have a wonderful surprise for you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Davis. I just have time to get my galoshes on. Oh, but on. you can't go without trying my Armenian pancakes. They've been setting for five days, so the goat's milk would be good and sour. But, Mrs. Davis, I'm allergic to goat. Now, 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 you just take one teensy weensy bite off this fork. Don't pay any attention to the smell. Oh, really, Mrs. Davis? I'm... There, there. Isn't that delicious? Oh, Armenians would never go into battle without one. Did they shoot them out of cannons? Uh, Ruth, uh, there's water for you. Oh, swallow it, Miss Brooks. It's a crime to throw them away. Well, it's a crime either way. Bonjour, Miss Brooks. Bonjour. Bonjour, Mother. Pancakes in the hall. Keldro. Oh, Ruth, when in Greece, do as the Greeks do. Speak English. Oh, now look, there's water honking for you. Oh, that worm can honk himself blue in the face for all I care, and he knows but it. he's waiting out front. Then I'm going off back. Au revoir now. Oh, I don't know what to do with that girl. Well, there's always Smith. Look at the time. I'll never make it. Oh, Miss Brooks, aren't you finishing your pancake? Mrs. Davis, it's a question of who's finishing who. But it's nourishing, dear. Just roll it up and take it with you. But I... Oh, dear. Walter came over here all this way for nothing. Oh, no, he didn't. He may be expecting Miss Garbo in Bobby socks. But he's getting Miss Brooks in galoshes. Oh. oh, Walter. Walter, it's awfully nice of you to drive me to school, but would you please be more careful? Oh, don't worry about Bessie, Miss Brooks. She drives herself. Yes, it wouldn't hurt to give her a hint now and then. So Ruth left by the back door, eh? Boy, does that burn me up. After all the trouble I went to to get the car, I even missed my breakfast. You did? Well, you're just the one I'm looking for. Have a pancake. A pancake? Oh, I don't know whether I should or not. I feel so unsettled. Oh, these will settle you, Walter. I promise. <laughs> Tell me, 
What happened between you and Ruth? She read a book. Oh, that always leads to trouble. Which book? Oh, a book of the great love letters in history or something. Now she says all she believes in is spiritual love. Oh, and you don't? Well, I believe in it, Miss Brooks, but how do you do it? I see what you mean. You see, Walter, it's just that Ruth doesn't appreciate yet that a man is a thing to be treasured. Well, when will she appreciate that? When she gets to be my age. Oh, I couldn't wait that long, Miss Brooks. Now, wait a minute. How old do you think I am? Thirty-five. Walter. Forty. Walter. Forty-five. Walter, this isn't an auction. <laughs> I'm not a day old. Walter, look out, that car. I saw it. Say, I've got a great idea. Oh, you mean you've decided to drive on the right side of the street? No, seriously. I'll write her a letter. Something that will break her heart and burn her up. I can knock it off at school today. Walter, what makes you think we're going to get to school today? Say, if I brought the letter over to you tonight after dinner, Miss Brooks, would you look it over for me? Yes, you? yes, yes, Walter, anything. We'll keep it a secret that you help me. I'll make it spiritual, see? Walter, please, that car. Right up to the very end, and... Walter! And then I'll let her have... Miss Brooks, what are you doing on the floor? I'm not sure, Walter, but while I'm down here, would you like me to check your ignition? Look here, young man. Anyone who drives like that shouldn't be allowed on a kitty car. Me? Listen, what's the idea of having your fender so far out in the road? Young man, if you're trying to imply that I... Please, will somebody please take me up off the floor? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. I, I forgot. Are you all right? I'm just fine, thanks. I love having my foot in my face. Here, here. I'll help you. Everything okay? Yes, Walter. Everything's okay. It's in slightly different order, but okay. Well, young woman, I hope this teaches you what comes of joyriding. Joyriding? Yes. You call what I've been doing joyriding? I'll thank you to control your temper. Temper? Why, this boy... I'm sorry, I haven't any time for further discussion. Goodbye, Walter. And thanks for the ride. If you'll pardon the expression. Oh, don't forget tonight, Miss Brooks. That's one of the most offensive young women I've ever met. Say, do you know who she is? Who? That just happens to be one of the best teachers we got over at South High. That's all. Well, that's very interesting. Do you know who I am? Who? I just happen to be the new president of the school board. That's all. La, 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 la. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, Miss Brooks. Oh, Miss Weaver, am I that late? Well, not really. It's just that everyone else arrived with the dawn to prepare for the right Honorable Osgood Conklin. They did? I've never seen the faculty in such a state. Why, I walked by the gymnasium, and there was Miss Hooper polishing her dumbbells. <laughs> Where's Mr. Darwell? Our principal? Yeah. In there in his office, chewing on his five beta kappa keys. It's really getting him down. He's watered his begonia three times. Well, I'd better get to my room and do something about my condition. My hair's a mess. Why worry, Miss Brooks? A teacher's hair is just the place to put pencils. Oh, good morning, Mr. Boynton. Good morning, Miss Weaver. Oh, Mr. Boynton. Miss Brooks? There are your attendance reports, Mr. Boynton. And here's your mail, Mr. Boynton. Thank you. Isn't it nice? We're in the same box. Well, both of our names begin with B. Mr. Boynton, you have such a quick mind. Well, uh, it is thorough. Yes, terribly. But sometimes I think you tax it too much. You probably need more recreation. You know what I mean. Well, carrying on my biology experiment is recreation enough. You don't know what I mean. Of course, I used to collect stamps. That was pretty exciting. Oh, my, yes. There's no end of possibilities. Have you ever tried your hand at beadwork? <laughs> no, is that fun? Fun? Why, it makes you tingle all over. Uh, you must show me how it's done sometimes. And, and basket weaving can be fun, too. Really? Oh, sure, if we're both inside the same basket. <laughs> uh, Miss Brooks, if you don't mind my changing the subject, are you busy tonight? Busy? Me? Well, Mr. Boynton, I, I, I couldn't be unbusier. I'd like to come over after dinner. That is, if we can be alone. Alone? Oh, we'll be practically isolated, Mr. Boynton. You see, what I had in mind... My... Mr. Boynton, 
You'd better be getting to your classroom. Mr. Copeland's arrived. Oh, has he, Mrs. Owl? Yes, and frankly, oh. he's not in a very good mood, so I'm particularly anxious to have everything go well. Uh, incidentally, Miss Brooks, your class will be among the first visitors. Oh, I'll be ready for you, Mrs. Owl. Good. And you know, Miss Brooks, nothing is more important than a first impression. <laughs> Have your attention, please. Mr. Conklin, the new school board president, is at South High today, and if he should visit our class, there's no reason to be nervous or self-conscious. We'll just go on in our normal manner, and I'm sure I'll get that salary rate. Um, we'll do fine. Now, <clears throat> you take up where we left off yesterday. Oh, uh, pardon me, Miss Brooks. Oh. Mr. Conklin and I just happened to be passing by. Well, and... you come right in, Mr. Dowler. Uh, this way, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Conklin, this is our Miss Brooks. That's Miss Brooks? Yes. That's Mr. Conklin? Uh, Bronklin, I mean. Oh, you two have met. Well, you might say we ran into each other this morning. That was Miss Brooks? Oh. Well, uh, Mr. Conklin, I, I have an idea. Yes. Uh, why don't we skip the English uh, and drop in on manual training? They have a splendid collection of hand-decorated doors. Uh, no, 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 Mr. Darwell. I'm particularly... Particularly interested in watching Miss Brooks conduct her class. Oh, well, I uh, suppose you go right on with your class, Miss Brooks. We'll just sit at the back of the room and uh, uh, probably learn something, too. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> now, uh, class, I'm going to read these lines, and I want you to tell me whom... I mean, who? No, whom? I, I, I want you to tell me the name of the author. So faithful in love... So Conklin and war, pardon me, so, so dauntless in war, never was there a night like young Lockenbar. Hands, please. No hands? You've all got them, you know. Just look at the ends of your sleeves. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's a hand. Winona. You can always depend on Winona. Who wrote those lines, Winona? I don't know, Miss Brooks. I just want to leave the room. <laughs> Great. Mr. Darwell, I think I've heard all I care to in this class. Let's go on to manual training. Uh, very well, Mr. Conklin. I'll be right with you. Uh, very well, Mr. Darwell. Uh, Miss Brooks. Yes, Mr. Darwell. I'll just lower the shades to half mass and leave quietly. <laughs> well, it was an unfortunate beginning, Miss Brooks. But for the rest of the day, why don't you, well, sort of keep in the background? Mr. Darwell, you won't be able to tell me from the wallpaper. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Ah, oh, good morning, Miss Brooks. Come right in. <laughs> I just happened to be passing your by laboratory and... I uh, just dropped in to see what time you were coming over tonight. Tonight? Yes. You see, one of my students is dropping by so I can look over a letter he's been no, writing. I'm not sure I can make it at all now, Miss Brooks. I'm worried about Violet. Violet? The white mutated mouse I told you about. But, Mr. Boyd... Daddy there, Violet, sweetheart. You know, I don't like the feel of her stomach. Mr. Boynton. It's lumpy. Uh, Mr. Boynton, you, you told me that you wanted to come over tonight, and I... Well, frankly, I don't think I should leave Viola when she's in this condition. You understand, I have to... Yes, I know. You have to sit up with a sick rat. Mouse. <laughs> Mouse. Viola's delicate, but she's sweet. Of course, she's a little peaked today. Maybe she worries about her lumpy stomach. I would. Uh, well, I don't know what it is. You know... I think I'd better have a look at her cage. Hold her a minute here. Oh, no. No, 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 no. She'll be all right if you just handle her gently. Here. <laughs> you dropped Violet. He attacked me. Get down off that desk. No, I can't. I can't. She's there under the table. I'll get her if you just stop screaming no. and let go of your skirt. And this is our biology. Why, Miss Brooks, what are you doing up on that desk? And where is Mr. Boynton? He's under the table with Violet, Mr. Darwin. <laughs> Violet? Well, now I know what goes on in a biology laboratory. But, Mr. Conklin, it's just an experiment. Oh, Mr. Conklin, I'm sure that I could... 
Mr. Cosby, I'm sure. Yes, so am I. Very sure. Come, Mr. Darwell, I suggest we come back later after they get Violet out from under the table. But, Mr. Clink, a uh, trunk. Oh, get it. What? Oh, finally got Violet, Miss Brooks. So I see. Isn't she a beauty? Oh, ravishing. And to think she's mine. Yes, just think. And you know something, Mr. Boynton? What? You make a lovely couple. <laughs> You're listening to Our Miss Brooks, a new comedy show starring Miss Shirley Booth. (laughs) Poor Miss Brooks. She got up this morning determined to make a good impression on the new president of the school board, Osgood Conklin. But somehow she hit him the wrong way, or rather the car she was driving to school in did, and events from that point on didn't go well. It's after school now, and Miss Brooks is in her room at the Davis home, lying down, entertaining some dark thoughts. I think I'll run away from it all and go to Brooklyn or somewhere. Maybe I could go to Africa and teach the natives. No, the school board president would probably turn out to be a cannibal. Probably have me right at home, have me for dinner the first day. I can see it now. For an appetizer tonight, we'll have Miss Brooks on toast. Even a schoolboy, he was called Stony Face Conklin. Why did he ever have to grow up? Somebody should have prevented it. Parents are so careless. Of course, we're old friends, Margaret, but. uh, No, I haven't anything against Miss Brooks, but. Yes, I know she lives with you, but I can't possibly. Uh, But I can't. But I... I... All right, Margaret, all right. I'll come to dinner tonight. Yes, 6.30. Goodbye, Margaret. Miss Douglas. Uh, Yes, Miss Douglas? Send out for a box of aspirin, please. Yes, sir. And Mrs. Denton is on her way in to see you. Mrs. Denton? The president of the Women's Civic League. Oh, no! Stop her! Tell her I've gone for the day. Tell her I've gone south. Tell her I... Why, Mrs. Denton, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, when you were running for president of the school board, I threw my weight, which I must say is considerable, behind you. Now, the least I expect, Mr. Conklin... Naturally, I'm interested in your problem, Mrs. Denton. I'm a veritable tigress when it comes to my boy, Miss Conklin, a veritable tigress. Oh, yes, yes, I can see that. Mr. Conklin. Not over a half hour ago, I heard my Walter tell Ruth Davis over the phone that he had a date tonight with an older woman, a teacher at South High. Oh, I'm sure you misunderstood, Mrs. Denton. Our students are allergic to teachers. Mr. Cogman, you've never been a mother, I can see that. (laughs) Mrs. Denton, I'm sure it's just an innocent... Now, just listen to this. This fell out of Walter's notebook when he came home from school. Steal yourself, Miss Conklin. Uh, I'm steel. I can hardly bring myself to read it. <clears throat> At last, I've got what I want. Red hair and what a tough and sturdy... Sturdy little body. What? Would you call that innocent, Miss Conklin? <laughs> Mrs. Davis, you shouldn't have had Mr. Conklin to dinner tonight. Oh, now imagine being afraid of our good Conklin. He won't bite you. Maybe not, but why does he keep baring his fangs? Besides, I was counting on your going to the movies tonight. Mr. Boynton's coming. Now, I'm not going to listen to another word. You come right in here with me. Osgood, you know Miss Brooks. Oh, yes. Uh, good evening, Miss Brooks. Good evening, Mr. Conklin. It's Conklin, Miss Brooks. I said Conklin, didn't I? Don't just stand there, dear. Sit down. Oh, now, wasn't this a grand idea, Osgood? Mm, fine. Oh, Mother's just full of ideas, and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, Ruth, that's sweet. <laughs> oh, Miss Brooks. Yes? Your elbow, dear. My what? <laughs> it's in the soup, dear. Oh. Oh, 
Oh, well, what's the difference? I've been in the soup all day. Frankly, Miss Brooks, to stay out of the soup, you've got to use your noodle. Oh, why, Osgood, that's very, very funny. Don't you think so, Miss Brooks? What? Oh, huh. <laughs> yes, it's the funniest thing I ever heard. Huh? What is it? Oh, we're laughing at your joke, Mr. Conklin. Noodle soup. Oh, all that. Oh, <laughs> yes, it's noodle soup. Not bad, was it? <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I had no idea you were so clever. Did you, Mrs. Davis? Uh, no. <laughs> I just never heard of anything so funny. <laughs> oh, Mr. Conklin, did anyone ever tell you you had a wonderful sense of humor? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, you've got a wonderful sense of humor. Oh, well, you really don't need a sense of humor to appreciate your jokes, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> well, I... Uh, uh, how do you mean that? <laughs> I mean, they're so witty. Oh, that horrible concoction that's brewing in the kitchen. That's coffee, Ruth. Coffee? Yes. It's strained through grapefruit rinds. It contains a little essence of garlic and a dash of Limburger cheese. <laughs> it's uh, Bulgarian coffee. Well, my heavens... No wonder they're always having trouble in the Balkans. Uh, uh, Ruth, dear, suppose you clear the table and then carry the coffee in here. Carry it? Mother, I think it's strong enough to walk in by itself. I'll help you, Ruth. Oh, no, 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 dear. You just sit there. Osgood might like to tell another joke. Uh, tell oh. me, Miss Brooks. Yes. Uh, what happens when a teacher allows a student to become infatuated with her and then lead him on? Well, I imagine the student would keep the teacher after school. Uh. <laughs> Uh, that's not funny, Miss Brooks. What this teacher's doing is serious. Oh, well, of course. It certainly is. It's terrible. Uh, what's she doing? She's having a rendezvous with one of her students at her house tonight. Oh, that's shocking. That's really shocking. Oh, yes, that is. We don't know who she is. Well, I can't imagine any teacher who... But the boy's name is Walter Denton. Well, if you ask me, they both ought to be... Who? Walter Denton? My Walter Denton? Why, what's the matter, Miss Brooks? You look as if you're in pain. Me? Oh, no. Is that... Is that the door? Uh, Ruth, see who it is. No, no I'll go. Oh, no. I, I'm closest. Miss Ruth, don't run. Well, I always run after dinner. It helps my digestion. <laughs> I'll replant that for you tomorrow, Mrs. Davis. Don't worry about it, dear. Hi, Miss Brooks. Here I am, right on time. And boy, what a letter I've written. Walter, come back here. Come out of the living room. There are a couple of words I'm not so sure of. Walter, you have to leave. You don't understand. Ruth! Ruth, why isn't she at the movies? Nobody's at the movies. I tried to tell you, Walter. Well, I can't let Ruth see me here. I'd be ruined. Walter, come out from behind that curtain. Walter! Oh, right in here, Osgood. Oh, who was at the door, dear? The, the what? Oh, uh, it was the wrong number. The wrong number, Miss Brooks? I mean, I mean the, the wrong house number, Mr. Conklin. Uh, put the tray on the coffee table, Ruth, and try to look more pleasant, dear. If no one objects, I'm going up to my room and brood. Bonsoir, Something wrong, Miss Brooks? Wrong? Yes, dear, you seem so nervous. You're pulling all the threads out of that tassel. Oh, yeah, so I am. I guess no tassel's safe near me, that's all. They don't make them like they did before the war, do they? I remember some tassels that you could pull on all day. Now, come and get your coffee, dear. It'll calm you. You know, the Bulgarians drink it flat on their back. I wish I were flat on my back and in Bulgaria. <laughs> uh, Osgood, it's, uh, it's stuffy in here, dear. Well, pull back those curtains. No. Open the window. No, not, not the curtains. Why, Please, look, what is wrong? Oh, drafts can be so dangerous. Why don't we go for a walk or, or a drive or something? Let's, uh, let's get out, shall we? Nonsense, Miss Brooks. I'll just open the window and you'll feel better. But, Mr. Brockman... Uh... Yes, there we are. Well, where could he have... I mean, how could he have... <laughs> Nerves, Osgood. Oh, I'll be all right in a moment. Yes, just lay your head back against the couch and I'll get you a pillow. I always keep some here in the window seat just for emergencies. You never know when... Why, hello, Walter. Here you are, Miss... Walter, <laughs> oh, Denton. Come out of my window seat. So that's Walter Denton. Oh, no. Hi, everybody. 
Walter, what are you doing in there? Well, I came here to see Miss Brooks. I thought we'd be alone. Walter. Well? Now, Mr. Conklin, I know how this must look. But it's really, it's really quite easy to explain. Easy, huh? Yes. Walter, you tell them why you came here tonight. Why? It's nobody's business but our own. Walter. But, Miss Brooks, we agreed that this was to be our secret. Walter, please, for the last time, explain. Well, if you gotta know, I came over because Miss Brooks said she'd help me with the letter I was writing to Ruth. Well, that was very sweet of Miss Brooks. Don't you think so, Osborne? Extremely. Now let's hear you explain this, Miss Brooks. I, I don't understand. Just read it, Miss Brooks. It's a page from Walter's diary. Mine? At last, I've got what I want. Red hair, and what a tough and sturdy little body. Walter. I wish everybody would stop saying Walter. This isn't even my writing. Here, look at the other side. That's my biology notes from yesterday. Oh, I remember now. I asked Mr. Boynton to loan me a piece of paper. Mr. Boynton wrote that? Oh, Miss Brooks, don't you get it? Get what? Said here. It's you Mr. Boynton's writing about. Me? Just what do you want it? A tough and sturdy little... Well, I am strong. Surely you're not pleased, Miss Brooks. I'm not? Oh, I mean, I'm not. Good evening. The front door was open, and I just... Oh, Mr. Boynton. Well, I thought you said that we were going to be alone, Miss Brooks. You too? <laughs> Mr. Boynton, I'd like to know whether you wrote this or not. Well, let me see it. Yes, I wrote it. It was supposed to go in my diary. Diary? Yes, what's wrong with it anyway? She is strong, and I did work hard to get it. Oh, Mr. Boynton, please, not in front of everybody. It took 23 generations of crossbreeding to get a red back mouse like that. Mouse? Mouse? Sure, what did you think I was writing about? Well, I, I knew it was a mouse, Mr. Boynton. I just didn't know which one. <laughs> well, this... This is amazing, most amazing. I... I don't quite know what to say. Well, I do. Ever since I got up this morning, all I wanted to do was to make a good impression on you, Mr. Conklin. My knees knock like castanets. But they're not knocking anymore. I'm as steady as a clock. I mean, a rock. You know, the trouble with you, Mr. Conklin, is that you can't forgive a teacher who behaves like a human being. Well, from now on, I'm being human, and if you want my resignation, I'll give it to you gladly. Mrs. Davis, I'd like a drink. Miss Brooks. Of water. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, perhaps it would be better if we discuss this more calmly tomorrow. I'll see to the door, Osgood. And you too, Walter. But my letter... Come along, Walter, right this way. Well, Mr. Boynton, at last... Alone. And a good thing, too. I'm pretty anxious to get at it. Oh. <laughs> yes. So am I. Come on, let's sit over here on the couch. It's so soft and comfortable. You really think so? Of course. I'll just turn off this lamp. But if you turn it off, how will we see? <laughs> well, is that necessary? Why, sure. But don't you think it would be more comfortable at the desk? It would? Why, of course. Well, if you say so... Yes, we'll be able to spread the papers on. Papers? What papers? The exam papers on the physiology of the frog. Oh, I see. I thought you'd be interested in helping me correct them. You are interested. Oh, I'm fascinated, Mr. Boynton. After all, when a man and a girl are alone on a couch and the lights are turned down low, what could be better than learning about the physiology of a frog? <laughs> You've been listening to the new comedy show, Our Miss Brooks, starring Shirley Booth. Poor Miss Brooks. Oh, yes. Still single. Mr. Boynton? Oh, didn't you hear? He married that mouse, Violet. <laughs> oh, yes. Charming. But I do wish he'd serve something besides cheese at her dinner party. <laughs> Don Etlinger wrote Our Miss Brooks with Norman Toker and Ed Juris. It was directed by Edward Ray Downs.